require third-party devices to it and then set up all sorts of rules. Uh, you can say if you know somebody triggers a motion sensor or a smoke detector goes off, you can have the door open or close, or you can trigger uh, some other device that you might have to the auxiliary output, like a light or a siren. So again, this is the outdoor facial recognition reader, and it does have a built-in card reader, and it can also be used for keypad authentication. But then here we have this 8SF1008 uh, plus unit. So SF stands for speed face. So these are facial recognition units. And then the plus denotes the temperature and mass detection. So really there's, there's two things to note. So when you're using temperature and mass detection, the unit is no longer outdoor rated. So you wouldn't be able to put this guy outdoors. And also when you're using the temperature and mass detection uh, functionality, it no longer has a built-in card reader. So you'd still have to, you'd have to wire a card reader to it via the Wigan input, so you can still do card authentication. You would just need uh, to wire, you know, a card reader to it. But other than that, it's a, it's basically the same thing. So it has um, a, a relay in the back, so it can control the lock directly. It has a Wigan out, so you can uh, have, you can wire it to a third-party access control system. It can also authenticate you via your palm. You can choose to use it with our software or without, and then it has the auxiliary inputs and outputs where you can manage third-party devices. So this is just a very quick video of somebody uh, using facial recognition to gain access to a parking lot. So you can see he's just going to drive up to the gate. He's just going to look at a reader here. He doesn't have to present a card. He doesn't have to type in with a password, and the gate's going to open. And then we have our uh, five-inch model unit. So you do not see a, a plus in the part number at the top here. So this is the non-temperature and non-mass detection unit. So this is actually a four-factor reader. It can recognize you via your face. It also has a fingerprint sensor at the bottom, so it's fingerprint authentication. And then it does have a built-in card reader. And then it's also a touch screen for a numeric keypad. And then we have the five inch unit that does have our mask and temperature detection. So again, the thing to note is when you're using the mask and temperature detection, it's uh, not outdoor rated, but the five inch model isn't outdoor rated anyway. And also it does not have a built-in card reader, so you'd have to wire a card reader to it via the Wigan input. But then these are, this is the reader that you'd want to use when you want to discern what somebody's temperature is or if they're wearing a mask and grant them access or not based on that. So this is just a, a few diagrams of some uh, wiring instructions. Again, you can wire a lock to it directly, or you can send a Wigan out to a third-party panel. It's got auxiliary inputs and outputs, so you can wire like an alarm to it, or you can wire an exit button to it, or like a motion sensor. And then on the interface of the reader, and I'll demonstrate this when I do the live demo, is how you would enroll new users. You can also enroll users through the software when you're using it with the software. So I just want to show you this quick 30-second video. This really demonstrates the functionality of the temperature and the mass detection. So here we're going to see a turnstile uh, with one of our temperature detection readers wired to it. And someone's going to walk up to the reader and present their face. And because they're wearing a mask correctly and because their temperature is good, they were granted access. Next up, this person's going to authenticate themselves with their palm, because this is a palm authentication reader, and then present their face. And everything's good, so she's granted access. And then next up, she's not wearing a mask, so even though her temperature is good, uh, she's not wearing a mask, so she's denied access. And then lastly, it kind of flips that on its head, she's wearing a mask, but her temperature is not good, so again, she's denied access. So I'll demonstrate uh, all that functionality when I actually demonstrate the reader, but I just wanted to show you that quick video that we have. Okay, so that's it for the kind of PowerPoint part of it and everything in theory. Uh, any questions before I actually dive into the actual demonstration? Good, okay. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just going to open up my webcam because I have a camera here and I have a, a reader at my desk. Okay, so you should be able to see one of our eight inch units right now, the SF1008 plus. So basically I'll demonstrate it in two ways. First I'm going to demonstrate it uh, without the software and then I'm going to demonstrate it with the software. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, come over here to the menus, and you can see the various different icons here that control different functionalities of the reader. I'm going to come over here to user management. I'm going to click on all users, and you can see I'm already enrolled on the reader. I'm just going to delete my profile so we can show it to you as if this were a brand new installation. So now there's nobody on the reader. So I'm going to come back to the menu. I'll come back to user management, and I'm going to come over here to new user, and now I'm going to enroll myself on the reader. So this is the form that you would fill out when enrolling a new person. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type in my name. So let's type in my first name. Now I'll type in my last name. 
I'm going to uh, I'm going to skip user role for right now, but I'm going to demonstrate that functionality at the end here. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enroll my Palm, so because this is also a Palm authentication reader. So I'm just going to hold my hand out to the reader, and you should see a nav bar at the bottom start to populate. Okay, so I enrolled my Palm. You can see it took less than, what, 10 seconds maybe? So now I'm going to enroll my face in the reader. So I'm just going to tap face, and I'll present my face to the reader. So let's do that. Okay, so my face is now enrolled successfully. And then lastly, I'm just going to give myself a numeric password. So I'm just going to tap password. I'm just going to have it be 1234. I'll retype it. And there we go. So now I'm enrolled on the unit. So very easy to enroll people uh, to enroll people on the reader. But now I'm going to manage the temperature and mass detection settings. So I'm back into the main menu here. I'm going to click on System. And then I'm going to come over here to Detection Management. And here's the screen where I'd manage my temperature and mass detection settings. So the first thing that you see here is Enable Temperature Screening with Infrared. Obviously, we want to keep that on because we want to measure people's temperature. And then we have to set our high temperature threshold. So anybody above that uh, temperature is going to be read as having a high temperature. Right now, I have it set to 100 degrees. If somebody is over the high temperature threshold, we want to deny them access. You don't necessarily have to deny them access, but we're going to keep that setting on for right now. There's a temperature deviation correction because uh, the ambient temperature of the room needs to be programmed into the reader. And if the ambient temperature of the room fluctuates by a few degrees, we can accommodate for that. Nextly, we have temperature unit. This is just uh, how you want the reader to report, whether it's in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Temperature measurement distance. There's close, medium, and far. We recommend just keeping it on far. It's really the ideal distance for mask and temperature detection. It's 18 inches. Uh, temperature calibration. This is where you would program what the ambient temperature of the room is on the reader. So the reader can ha can display the somebody's body temperature or not. So I'm going to keep it on for now. Oh, let's go back to the menu here. Time me out. So I'm going to keep it on for now so you can see uh, what my temperature is as I present to the reader. So there's the mass detection functionality. So we can enable mass detection or not. So let's turn that off for right now. But I'll demonstrate that in a little bit. Allow unregistered people to access. So you don't necessarily even have to be enrolled on the reader for it to take your temperature and discern whether or not you're wearing a mask. Even if you're not enrolled on the reader, you can still present to it, and it can grant you access or not. Enable lock relay. That's just if you're using it to control a lock. We can control how long the lock is going to stay open for. And then enable a capture of unregistered people. So I'm over here, enable capture of unregistered people. The unit can take a picture of somebody as they authenticate, and it can be brought back to the software. So if we were to turn that on, well, which it is right now, but let's turn it off for a second, and now let's turn it back on, and it's just going to ex ask you to accept a privacy agreement because we want to let people know that we're taking a picture of them. Uh, lastly, you can trigger an external an external relay that's on the back of the reader. So if somebody's you know is not wearing their mask correctly or their temperature is too high, you can have a light go off, you can have a siren go off, you can trigger some sort of device that you wired to the reader. All right, but now that we have our temperature and mass detection settings the way we want it, I'm going to back out of the reader here. I'll come back to the main screen. And now I'm going to present my face to the reader, and you'll see it's going to take my temperature, and hopefully if I don't have a temperature above 100 degrees, it'll grant me access. So let's try that. There we go. So a temperature of 97.44, and that was successfully verified. Now what I'm going to do is I'll come back to the menu here. I'll come back to system. I'll come back to detection management. But now I'm going to lower the high, temperature, the high temperature threshold. So instead of 90, let's put it down to 95. So anybody above 95 is going to be read as having a high temperature. And because my temperature was 97, I should be denied access. So let's try that. Did I not save it here? Let's try that one more time. System, detection management, 95, OK. And what do I have here for temperature over the range access denied? Let's do this. OK, I'm going to have to update the firmware on this reader right now. Gave me a few issues here. But normally it says uh, fail to verify and um, disallowed access. But now let's put this back. Uh, it still had the high temperature alert. Yeah, OK. So I guess it denied me access. Now I'm going to raise it back to 100 degrees. 
And now I'm going to enable the mask detection. So let's turn that on. So first I'm going to present without a mask, and you'll see uh, it'll deny me access. So even though my temperature is good, it's going to, because I'm not wearing a mask, it should deny me access. said without mask, so you can see that it did see that I wasn't wearing a mask. And now I'm going to wear a mask, and let's see how it reads me now. And you see how it uh, granted me access because it saw I was wearing a mask. All right, so one more feature that I want to show you on the reader is I uh, mentioned that there is this uh, normal user, and then there's what's called a super user in my profile. So if I were to come back to my profile here, right now uh, I'm registered as a normal user. And if I were to tap that, and I could make myself a super administrative user, I just want to show that what that does is it locks down the menu of the reader. So now if I were to press the menu button, I wouldn't be able to access the menus because I'd first have to authenticate myself. So I'm going to put in my ID number, which is 1, and then I'll put in my password. And only now do I have access to the menus. So sometimes people ask, you know, you were just pressing the menu button and then you grant, were granted access to the menus. Doesn't that mean that anybody can walk up to the reader and have access to the menus? Well, yes, until you put an, an administrative uh, user on the reader. So I'm just going to come back here and I'll turn myself off of administrative user. And now I should be able to have access to the menus uh, without any problem. There you go. OK, so that's using the reader in, in standalone mode. Next, I'm going to show it to you with the software. But any questions there? Yeah, so <clears throat> this uh, reader, it's using actually two systems. It's using uh, visible light and it's using infrared. So it'll actually switch back and forth between what it needs to. So infrared is really helpful for obviously measuring temperature. So you know we have it there. Whereas the facial recognition is being done through visible light. So it's, it's just uh, the best way to take someone's temperature. All right, anything else? Well, anyway, now I can show you managing the reader through the software. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up uh, my web browser here. Let me log out of the software so I can show it to you from the beginning. So this is the software that you'd use. I'm sorry. This is, this is, um, this is any, any PC on your network, correct? Sorry? This is any PC on your network? Yeah, you would just download the software. Uh, this is a paid version of our software, so it is going to require a one-time license fee. Then you would download it to any PC on the network. And also, if you have an account like with uh, Amazon Web Services, you can also store it in the cloud or something like that. Oh, gotcha. Okay, good. Thanks. So this software is called ZK Biosecurity Software. Uh, this is the software that you'd use to manage basically all the devices in our enterprise level line, including our temperature detection readers. So I'm going to log in with the default username and password. It's admin, admin. And also you can see in the red text, I'm on a trial version of the software. It'll actually come with a free 60-day trial until a license needs to be activated. So when my license runs out, uh, I guess I'll get TechSport to generate a license for me. But I have all the functionality of the software, uh, even on the trial version. OK, so right now I'm logged into the software. And you can see right off the bat, it gives me a lot of uh, statistics and analytics in this dashboard here. I can see how many users I've enrolled. I can see how many devices I've enrolled. I can see how many credentials I've enrolled and what those credentials are. And then I can also see a, a history of transactions. So I'm going to uh, come over to the top here. And you can see there's these various different icons. We call these modules because there are uh, different modules that can be added and deleted based on what license you have. So we have this personnel module, which is where all your personnel are managed. You have this access module, where you control all your access control settings. You have the temperature detection module, which is used for pulling reports from the temperature detection reader. And then we have this system module. This is just where you configure a lot of settings for the software itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to this access module. Then I'm going to come over here to this device screen, where I can see uh, all my devices that I have linked to the software. So right now, in the past, I've had a two-door biometric panel of ours linked to the software. And I, obviously, I've had our 
uh, speed face reader linked to the software. I'm just going to delete the two-door panel because I'm not really demonstrating that right now. So let's just keep everything centric to the temperature detection reader. But also from the screen, I can also manage a lot of the settings of, of the reader uh, from the software. So you saw before where I set my temperature and mass detection parameters. If I were to checkbox the reader here and come over here to setup, you can see that there's this option for set mask and temperature detection parameters. So basically, uh, all those settings that you saw me configure before with the temperature detection and the mass detection, I can manage straight from the software itself. So this is really helpful if you have multiple readers. You don't have to go to each reader individually and configure the settings. You just come here to the software and configure the settings on the reader you know, from one central location. Okay, but now if I want to jump over here to this uh, real-time monitoring screen, so here, when somebody authenticates at the reader, they'll actually pop up on the screen and a picture can be taken and that picture can be brought back to the software. Uh, right now I don't have the reader set to take it back to the software. I need to update my reader uh, to demonstrate that. But you'll see that they can be sorted into one of three groups. They can be sorted into the uh, abnormal temperature group, they can be sorted into a normal temperature group, and they can be sorted into a no mask group. So you can have like a security guard monitoring the screen and as people authenticate at the reader, you know, hopefully they'll be in the normal record group and maybe no action needs to be taken. But if they're in the abnormal temperature group, the security guard might be prompted to do something. And then we have various reports that we can run uh, from the software. So first up, we have this statistics report. So this is just a breakdown of the type of transactions that the reader has had. There's a, uh, a the normal body temperature reads, the abnormal body temperature reads, and the no body temperature reads, or the unmeasured reads. We have this temperature raw report. So this is everything that's happened on the reader. And also, if you could see here, uh, there's a column on the right with a photo, uh, with a, a photo column where you can actually see the picture that the reader took as somebody authenticated. Okay, we have this individual temperature record. So this is a really useful report. So this is a report of users in the software and what their temperature reads were broken down by date. So you can see what my reads were on the 22nd. You can see what my reads were on the 23rd. Uh, let's find the 26th. That were my reads. These are my reads for today. So you can actually uh, have a breakdown of temperature reads uh, per person per date. Next, we have this abnormal temperature report. So this is obviously anybody who's come into the reader and has had a high temperature read. So you can see uh, when I've been playing around with the settings, these, this is the picture that was taken uh, when I've had a high temperature read. There's this uh, department daily statistics report. So when you enroll users into the software, you can sort them into, uh, let's say, a sales department or a marketing department or an HR department, and then you can generate reports per department. So you can see if there's a particular department that's had an unusually high number of high temperature reads. Uh, next, we have this monthly statistic report. This is just a breakdown of reads uh, organized by month. So you can see the abnormal reads, the normal reads, and the unmeasured reads. And then lastly, this is just uh, parameters. This is some settings for the software. We can choose how we want the software to uh, display the temperature, whether it's set Celsius or Fahrenheit. And also here, we can choose what the software considers to be a high body temperature read as opposed to what the reader considers to be a high body temperature read. So normally, you'd want to make sure that these two are the same. So if I were to change this right now to 90 degrees and come back here to the real-time monitoring, you can see that now in the normal records group, uh, nobody's in the normal records group because every time I've authenticated myself, I've had a body temperature higher than 90 degrees. So if I were to put this back up to 100 and come back to the real-time monitoring, now you can see the reads that I've had that were uh, below 100 degrees. So that's kind of a, a quick overview of the software and uh, reader management. Any questions there or anything that you want to see more in depth? Okay, well, another feature that I do want to mention is we can send out email notifications from the software. So if somebody, uh, let's say, has a high body temperature read or somebody's not wearing a mask, an email notification can go out uh, to a user or you know a number of users, and it could say, "Hey, this person authenticated at this reader at this time, uh, and their temperature was this." And so we can do email notifications based on certain events. 